Good evening. The Florida Department of Transportation would like to welcome you to the public hearing for the State Road 20 Project Development and Environment, or pd &E study, located in Okaloosa, Walton, and Washington Counties, Florida, Financial Management Project Numbers 220138-2-22-01, Two two zero six three five dash two dash twenty two dash zero one and two two zero six three five dash four dash twenty two dash zero one and ETDM number one four three zero two. In addition to the PDE staff here tonight, a representative from the district right of way department is here and will be available after the public hearing if you have questions regarding residential or business relocations on this project. A transcript is being made of all oral proceedings and will be a part of the public record for this project. Before we start the presentation, I will share a few details to help you participate in this meeting. On your computer or device screen, you should see an information window that looks like the one in the upper right corner shown here. To listen to the meeting, your computer or device speakers are selected by default. If you prefer to listen by phone, select telephone in the audio pane of the control panel and dial in using the information displayed. All virtual and phone-in attendees will be placed in listen-only mode throughout the public hearing. At a later date, we will provide responses to written comments that were submitted during online registration and those submitted at the in-person venue. The comment period begins as soon as the presentation is ended. Verbal comments from the in-person hearing will be addressed first. Comments from our virtual attendees will be addressed second. Providing verbal comments using GoToWebinar is simple. First, you must request to speak when registering to attend. During the comment period, the organizer will call your name that you provided at registration and unmute you. If the microphone icon is green, you're ready to make your comment. If the microphone icon is orange, you will need to click the microphone icon once and it will notify you that you're unmuted and then you can provide your comment. Again, you will not be on camera at any time if you join online. During the public comment period after the formal presentation, in-person participants will be called upon to speak first, followed by the virtual online speakers who wish to speak. If you dialed into the public hearing by telephone, your phone was automatically placed in listen-only mode and will remain in listen-only mode throughout the public hearing. A recording of the webinar will be available at the project website three days after the hearing. You can also call the project manager after the public hearing to request additional project information. Prior to the public hearing, draft engineering and environmental documents were made available for public review at the Freeport Public Library and the FDOT District 3 office since Tuesday, March 23, 2021, and will continue to be available through Friday, April 30th, 2021 at these locations. The FDOT District 3 location is by appointment only. Individuals who would like to view the documents should call Tori White, the FDOT project manager at 888-638-0250 extension 1455 or email tori.white at dot.state. .fl.us. The FDOT District 3 office is located at 1074 Highway 90 in Chipley, Florida. You may also view the project documents at the project website and at tonight's in-person public hearing. The purpose of this public hearing is to share information with the general public about the proposed improvement, its conceptual design, all alternatives under study and the potential benefits and disadvantages pertaining to social, economic, and environmental impacts upon the community. The public hearing also serves as an official forum providing an opportunity for members of the public to express their opinions regarding the project. There are three primary components to tonight's hearing. First, the open house, which occurred prior to this presentation, where you were invited to view the project displays and to speak with the project team and provide comments in writing or to the court reporter. 
Second, this presentation, which will explain the project purpose and need, study alternatives, and potential impacts, both beneficial and adverse. And third, a formal comment period following this presentation, where you will have the opportunity to provide oral statements or those at the in-person location may provide comments directly to the court reporter or in writing. This environmental study has been conducted by FDOT District 3 in compliance with all applicable federal environmental laws and pursuant to 23 USC Section 327 and the Implementing Memorandum of Understanding between FDOT and the Federal Highway Administration, FHWA, signed on December 14, 2016. The FDOT Office of Environmental Management in Tallahassee is the approving authority. The proposed improvement involves the widening of an eight-mile portion of State Road 20 from two to four lanes from King Road to County Road 3280 Black Creek Boulevard in Walton County and provide pedestrian and bicycle accommodations. This hearing is being held to provide you with the opportunity to comment on this project. The public hearing was advertised consistent with the federal and state requirements shown on the slide. Public participation at this hearing is encouraged and solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting either the Florida Department of Transportation District 3 office or the Tallahassee office of the Florida Department of Transportation. This contact information is also provided in the project handout. FDOT is conducting a Project Development and Environment, or PD&E, study for this project. The PD&E process is used to evaluate potential impacts to determine an alternative utilizing a continuous community outreach process to ensure that all interested parties have meaningful participation in the process. Public input and information received at the hearing will be taken into consideration when preparing the final documents for this study. Prior to initiating this PD&E study, FDOT conducted a feasibility study on State Road 20 from Katmar Road in Okaloosa County, continuing east through Walton County and terminating just east of State Road 79 in Washington County. The feasibility study documented the need for possible improvements, identified potential fatal flaws, and included traffic and safety analysis. Based on the traffic projections from the feasibility study, widening State Road 20 to four lanes is only justified in the eight-mile segment from King Road to County Road 3280 Black Creek Boulevard in Walton County. The purpose of this project is to address capacity issues on State Road 20 from King Road to County Road 3280 Black Creek Boulevard in Walton County. Currently, this segment of State Road 20 is a two-lane undivided roadway with a center left turn lane from west of Madison Street to west of Jackson Street, approximately 0.4 miles within the city of Freeport. This project is needed to address capacity and safety issues on State Road 20 from King Road to Black Creek Boulevard with a secondary need of providing an alternate east-west route for I-10 and US-98. The corridor is expected to in experience increased traffic volumes by 2045 due to the anticipated population increase in Walton County. In addition, State Road 20 from King Road to Black Creek Boulevard is experiencing more crashes than the average similar roadways. This project is consistent with local transportation plans, including the Okaloosa Walton Transportation Planning Organization 2040 Cost Feasible Plan, the Transportation Improvement Program, TIP, the State Transportation Improvement Program, STIP, and other regional plans. State Road 20 is designated as a Highway of Commerce by the Emerald Coast Regional Council. This designation is given to corridors that move significant volumes of freight having high value to end users. Additionally, this portion of State Road 20 is designated as an emergency evacuation route by the Florida Division of Emergency Management. 
The goals of this project are to address capacity and regional mobility needs along State Road 20, provide multimodal features such as bicycle and sidewalks where appropriate, enhance roadway safety, and avoid or minimize social and environmental impacts. No build and build alternatives are being considered as a part of this PD&E study. The no build alternative maintains the existing facility as is. No new improvements to State Road 20 are made and there is no congestion relief along the corridor. While the no build alternative would have no environmental impacts or financial costs, it would not address the vehicular and pedestrian traffic and safety needs. We will now discuss the build alternative, which proposes to widen State Road 20 to include four lanes from King Road to County Road 3280 Black Creek Boulevard, with two lanes in each direction, sidewalks and shared use paths are also included in some sections. This build alternative moving forward in the presentation will be referred to as the preferred alternative. State Road 20 is classified as a rural principal arterial. It's currently a two-lane, non-restrictive roadway. The proposed improvements would make it a four-lane restricted roadway, which provides guidelines for distances for median openings. The entire project uses a best fit alignment to avoid or reduce impacts. The preferred alternative uses three different typical sections. First, we will discuss the preferred alternative from King Road to west of Blueberry Road and from west of Joe Campbell Road to Black Creek Boulevard. This four-lane divided highway rural typical section includes 12-foot lanes, 10-foot shoulders, 5-foot paved, and a 40-foot median. There would be a 12-foot shared use path along the south side from West Bay Loop Road to west of Blueberry Road. From west of Blueberry Road to US 331, State Road 83, the preferred alternative is a four-lane divided highway urban typical section with 11-foot lanes, a raised 22-foot median, a 6-foot sidewalk along the north side, and a 12-foot shared use path along the south side, along with curb and gutter. Lastly, the preferred alternative includes a transition typical section from US 331 to west of Joe Campbell Road consisting of a four lane divided highway with 12 foot lanes, a raised 22 foot median that includes four foot inside paved shoulders, a five foot sidewalk along the north side, and a 12 foot shared use path along the south side, along with curb and gutter. The preferred alternative will also include bridge enhancements. This includes widening over the Aliqua Slough Creek and Big Aliqua Creek and the replacement of Lafayette Creek Bridge. Based on public feedback, the proposed shared use path was extended to provide the missing link for the Bay Loop Trail from County Road 83A West, West Bay Loop Road, to County Road 83A East, East Bay Loop Road, and continues east through Freeport. This improvement will enhance the recreational opportunities in this area by providing a safer route for pedestrians and bicyclists. The pd and &E study identified several options to accommodate traffic volumes that are projected to occur in year 2045, with a goal to maintain an acceptable level of service through year 2045. Level of service, or LOS, measures to what extent cars are delayed when traveling through a given area. As in grade school, a level of service of F is failing or highly congested, and A is the best, or free-flowing. An acceptable level of service is level of service D or better. The traffic analysis shows that with no improvements, State Road 20 from County Road 83A West to US 331 will be deficient level of service F by 2045. If State Road 20 is improved to a four-lane divided facility from King Road to Black Creek Boulevard, the necessary capacity and an acceptable level of service of D or better will be provided through the 2045 design year. As a part of the proposed widening improvements, the intersection of US 331 will also include additional turn lanes. 
Analysis of this intersection showed that the addition of right turn overlap signals and additional turn lanes, resulting in dual northbound and southbound left turn lanes and dual eastbound right turn lanes, would improve this intersection from a level of service F to a level of service D in both the AM peak and the PM peak hours. These improvements would help reduce intersection delay and congestion while also reducing vehicle queues, backups at the intersections. An important element of this PD&E study was to evaluate the potential project impacts and benefits of the proposed improvements. A wide range of environmental resources were evaluated, including social, cultural, natural, and physical features. Also considered were engineering and traffic factors, along with public input gathered throughout the PD&E study. One of the unavoidable consequences on a project such as this is the necessary relocation of families or businesses. On this project, we anticipate the relocation of 20 residential properties and 15 businesses. All right-of-way acquisition will be conducted in accordance with the Florida Statute 339.09 and the Federal Uniform Relocation Assistance and Real Property Acquisition Policies Act of 1970, commonly known as the Uniform Act. If you're required to make any type of move as a result of a Department of Transportation project, you can expect to be treated in a fair and helpful manner and in compliance with the Uniform Relocation Assistance Act. If a move is required, you will be contacted by an appraiser who will inspect your property. We encourage you to be present during the inspection and provide information about the value of your property. You may also be eligible for relocation advisory services and payment benefits. If you're being moved and you're unsatisfied with the department's determination of your eligibility for payment or the amount of that payment, you may appeal that determination. You will be promptly furnished necessary forms and notified of the procedures to be followed in making that appeal. A special word of caution. If you move before you receive notification of the relocation benefits that you might be entitled to, your benefits may be jeopardized. A representative from the District Right-of-Way Department is here tonight and will be able to provide you with further assistance if you have questions regarding residential or business relocations on this project. This slide illustrates the impacts for the preferred alternative relating to social resources comprising of residences, businesses, and community facilities, cultural resources, including archeological sites, historic resources, and Section 4F parks and, re and recreational lands, natural resources, including wetlands, floodplains, threatened and endangered species, and physical issues, which include air quality, noise, and potential contamination sites. The impacts related to these resources were evaluated to determine the preferred alternative. A comparison of the impacts from the preferred alternative is provided in the environmental document prepared for this project. The estimated project cost is $201.5 million. The project team examined the project area for publicly owned recreational properties that may be affected under Section 4F of the Department of Transportation Act of 1966. The City of Freeport City Hall KC Park has been identified as a Section 4F resource that will be impacted as a result of the project. The project proposes to use approximately 0.121 acres from the parking lot section of the City of Freeport City Hall KC Park property abutting the State Road 20 highlighted here in yellow. Currently, the City Hall and Casey Park use the same parking area. This acquisition would not affect the existing parking functions. Since the proposed project will not impact the parking functions and will not encroach upon the recreational uses of the park, there will be no adverse effect on the activities, features, or attributes of Casey Park. FDOT is seeking a Section 4F de minimis finding for the Casey Park property. In accordance with federal regulations, an opportunity for public review and comment 
is being provided as a part of this public hearing. Benefits of the proposed improvements include providing safety enhancements along with new and improved pedestrian facilities, improving mobility and relieving congestion in the study area, and providing positive social and economic impacts. This graphic represents the delivery process for a project, beginning with the feasibility phase and ending with the construction phase. This project from west of Freeport City Hall to County Road 3280 Black Creek Boulevard is funded for the design phase in 2024. The FDOT will continue to seek opportunities to fund the remaining portion of the project from King Road to west of Freeport City Hall. The project is currently not funded for right-of-way nor construction in the FDOT's five-year work program. Thank you. That concludes the formal presentation. We will now begin the public comment period of the public hearing. The next step is to incorporate your input on this public hearing into our decision-making process. After the comment period closes and your input has been considered, a decision will be made and the final PD&E document will be sent to the FDOT Office of Environmental Management, which based on the Memorandum of Understanding signed with the Federal Highway Administration on December 14, 2016, has approval authority on this project, granting location and design concept acceptance. Please note that we will not be responding to your comments and questions today, but we will respond in writing at a later date. Anyone desiring to make a statement now will have an opportunity to do so. There are multiple ways you may provide your comments tonight, written, verbally, or online. 